Our next speaker is uh, Meitao Onen from Ben Gurion University. It's work with Shacha Finder and Oren Freifeld. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Meitar. I'm going to present to you today a work that was I did in my master's in collaboration with Shacha Finder under the supervision of Dr. Oren Freifeld. It is called Deep DPM, Deep Clustering with an Unknown Number of Clusters, and it was also presented in last year's CVPR. Okay. No? Sorry. Okay. So, as the name suggests, we do clustering, so it's an unsupervised task, class labels are unknown. However, often when we deal with unsupervised tasks, not only the class labels are unknown, but also the number of classes. So for example, you can think about customer segmentation when you don't necessarily know all the pattern groups, or like in this example, where you get a set of dog images and you want to group it by breed, but you don't necessarily know the number of breeds in advance. So, more formally, we perform clustering when not only the class labels are unknown, but also the number of classes and their weights. So we don't know the number of samples that come from each class. Um, there are multiple ways to approach these kinds of problems. The most common one is to take a parametric clustering model, which is a clustering model that knows the number of classes in advance, like for example, k-means run it with multiple, multiple times with various values for k, the number of clusters, and then choose the best one given an unsupervised criteria. Um, like many other applications, uh, deep learning is the leading paradigm for clustering too. And we listed here three popular approaches for deep clustering with scan being the state of the art, at least at the time that this paper was written. The problem with this approach is, first of all, <coughs> sorry, that is very expensive. So think about training your model multiple times with various values for k. It's very expensive in times and resources, especially when the data sets are large. Also, most deep clustering uh, methods assume uniform class weights, so they assume that the data set is balanced, which is a very hard assumption, especially for unsupervised data sets. Also, without a good estimation for k, parametric methods might suffer in performance. We'll see an example right away. And also, even when using the right k, the number of clusters, parametric methods might reach only poor local minimum. So, if we take a look at this example, we ran three parametric methods, scan, DCN, and k-means, which was run on deep features. We ran it on the ImageNet 50 data set, which is a data set that consists of 50 randomly selected classes of the ImageNet data set. And we use various values for k, as you can see here on the x-axis. So the further away the k we used is from the ground truth, the performance deteriorates quite significantly. So choosing or having a good estimation of the number of clusters is very important for parametric methods. Another approach is to use non-parametric clustering. So these are a set of methods that don't require knowing the number of clusters in advance. Um, they could be grouped into two groups, so non-Bayesian and Bayesian methods. The most popular of the non-Bayesian, non-parametric methods is dbscan. Um, the problem with this set of methods is that the hyperparameter tuning is usually very hard where this is not a problem with the Bayesian methods, but usually as they rely on sampling, it's hard for them to scale for large data sets. Anyway, in both cases, it's pretty hard to combine them in deep learning pipelines, um, mostly because you have to have a gradient propagation. So we suggest to bridge this gap, so we propose a new non-parametric method, so no need for model selection, but uh, we are based on deep learning, so we are also very scalable too. So for example, we're the first non-parametric method to run on the ImageNet data set. Also, 
unlike other deep clustering methods, we can handle class imbalance quite gracefully. We will show it later in the results. So our work is inspired by the Dirichlet process mixture of Chang and Fisher, which is a non-parametric extension of the GMM, um, which consists of two main parts. First of all, a restricted Gibbs sampler for clustering under a fixed K. So in a very, very higher level, you can think about GMM clustering under a fixed K. And then they perform splits and merges in order to change K. So in order to increase the number of clusters, you split a uh, cluster into two, or to decrease it, you merge two clusters into one. This is enabled by maintaining subclusters. So each cluster will have two subclusters, and the splits and merges are proposed within a metropolis hasting framework. So we raise proposals for splits or merges and accept them with a certain probability. In our work, which we call Deep DPM, we, we also, we build on Chang and Fisher samplers, so we can also be seen as a DPM inference algorithm. We also use splits and merges to change K, but unlike Chang and Fisher, we use deep learning optimization to perform the clustering. Our work consists of two main parts. So for clustering, we use a, sub, a clustering network and K subclustering networks. So now every cluster has its own subclustering network. And again, we use splits and merges to change K. So this is a small demonstration of how the network works. So on the left here, you can see the network's prediction. We initialized it with K equals one, so one cluster. On the right, you can see the ground truth labels. So you see there are in ground truth 15 clusters and the decision boundaries of the network. So you see that as training progresses, the network successfully splits the uh, clusters and achieves quite good clustering performance. Okay, so I'll explain a bit how the network works under a fixed K, how we actually perform the clustering, and later I'll explain how we perform the splits. So given a nominal value for K, which can be initialized randomly, um, Oh, we assume that there is some kind of unsupervised backbone, so we work on the feature space. So given these features, um, we feed it to the clustering net, which generates soft cluster assignments. You can think about it like a classification net. Then we compute hard assignments, so each data point is assigned to the most probable cluster. <clears throat> then. Each cluster has its own subclustering net, which classifies all the points that were assigned to that cluster into two subclusters. So when the feed forward process ends, we have soft cluster assignments and two subcluster assignments. As we said, this is not really classification, this is clustering, so we don't have labels. So we design our loss to um, to take as an input pseudo labels, which we generated using the EM algorithm. So the E step of the EM algorithm has closed form equations, which we can use. Um, you can see it right here. And we compare the predictions of the network to these assignments. So you take the closed form uh, probabilities of the E step of the classical EM algorithm and we try to make our network's predictions to become as similar as possible to them using the KL divergence. So basically, we encourage the network to produce predictions which are similar to the predictions of the E step of the EM algorithm. Okay, and this is how we change the number of clusters. So for splits, we propose splitting all the clusters into their subclusters. And for merges, we propose merging each cluster with each of the three nearest neighbors. So we'll choose maximum of one. Also, it's important to note that the network's architecture is adapted accordingly. So uh, when we change the number of clusters, the architecture of the network itself changes. So if we think about, for example, the clustering network, the final layer has K neurons. 
So now we need to adapt that layer. We do it dynamically as training progresses. Also, splits and merge can be seen as large optimization moves. So think, for example, of a big cluster, which is split. So many, many labels change their, uh, many data points change their labels simultaneously, which can be seen as a large move on the optimization surface. Okay. So first of all, we see some <coughs> clustering results from the ImageNet data set. We can see that all the images that were clustered together have some kind of semantic similarity. Um, next, we wanted to uh, compare with classical methods, non-deep ones, both parametric and non-parametric, where the DPM sampler, the last one here, used to be the state of the art. Um, so we did the comparisons on three data sets. On the upper row, it's the balanced version. On in the bottom one is an imbalanced version of it. You can see that our method dominates most of the metrics, but what is in interesting and cool to see here, that our method is equal or better than the GMM, where the GMM had the advantage of knowing the right number of clusters. It was given the GT number of classes, and also, our method is trying to resemble what the, GPA, the, what the GMM is learning. So this is a cool result. Also, when comparing to the other non-parametric methods, you can see that um, our method here in dark green achieved the most accurate estimation of the final number of clusters. And this is the same slide we saw in the introduction, where we saw the three parametric methods. Here we also added our result. And just to remember, we do not need to run on all the values of k. We need to run only once because our method infers it. And you can see that we get comparable results, but scan outperforms us. Um, and we can see that we get a pretty accurate estimation of the number of clusters. But when we induce some imbalance to the data set, where we just sample different number of samples from each class, you can see that the parametric methods really deteriorate in performance, where deep DPM stays uh, pretty stable and still achieves pretty accurate results. Um, not everything is perfect. So as I said, deep DPM relies on features, and given poor embeddings, we won't be able to cluster it. Also, we are designed for cases where the number of classes is unknown. So if it is known, if the data set is balanced, then parametric methods might actually do slightly better. Um, this is just to summarize. So we introduced deep DPM, which is a deep non-parametric clustering method. We showed you our cool loss, which enables Bayesian inference. Uh, we saw the importance of actually knowing the number of classes for parametric methods. Um, deep DPM outperforms existing non-parametric method, and it is robust to class imbalance and scalable enough to run on large data sets. Thank you. Thank you, Meitar. Uh, we have time for questions. Did you try to use the ANOVA as a loss? It, there was a, in, nine, in 2016, I think, there was a deck deep embedded uh, clustering, and they used the, the ANOVA as a loss, and this way they perform clustering. It might be interesting combining your work with uh, their loss function. No, it sounds really interesting. I'd love to hear more about it. Yes, go ahead. Back, uh, which back one did you use it for image based uh, cluster, clustering? Because you don't have a good feature extractor. That's true. That one, that's one of the main issues we encountered. So for the simpler data sets, such as MNIST, Fashion MNIST, we use a simple autoencoder. For the um, more elaborate ones, we tried using Suave. We ended, ended up using Moco, too. I think it was the best one we could find. Uh, if I recall correctly, hi. The Dirichlet process has a hyperparameter alpha. Yep. 
did you fine tune it or did you get rid of it somehow? So actually in the paper, I'm sorry, I don't know where you're at. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, so actually in the paper we did some ablation studies showing that the prior of alpha has little effect on the results. We tried ablating it. Did so we tried different values for it and showed that the results were kind of stable. Or many values of alpha? Yes, many like in size factors. So 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. More questions? <laughs> 